Hi, it's Dwyer. Always, 1776.com, a free site. Also, wealthspinning.blogspot.com, a free site. Nothing I say in this video should be construed as investment advice. I want everyone doing their own due diligence. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me point out, uh, the words in the background here are high risk. Understand, the risk in what I'm saying is extremely high. But as I believe, no risk it, no biscuit. You know, news has broken. The Washington Post, of course, has a Tesla expose. Uh, they have cracked Tesla's encryption and have released some so-called proprietary information, right? Uh, the information talks about some accidents involving uh, Tesla vehicles. It calls into question uh, Tesla's uh, autonomous driving capabilities. It makes Tesla less likely to be approved as a robo-taxi. By definition, in a robo-taxi, you're a passive passenger. You're not expected to grab the steering wheel and to make adjustments for uh, issues with the car's uh, detection system. Understand the stock is down big this year. Let me in this video suggest something different that investors need to look at. Tesla is now more affordable than it's been in recent memory. While I was a skeptic here online in these high-risk videos at higher prices, my view has changed a bit at today's prices. Let's all be aware here that things might not be as they seem. Tesla has a robotics unit that might be the most valuable part of the business. Right? That robotics unit might actually be long term worth more than its electric vehicle component, right? Let's also point out that for people watching Elon Musk, um, you can invest in private company SpaceX by investing in the publicly traded DXYZ ETF. Again, that's DXYZ ETF, which is called the Destiny Tech 100, which owns SpaceX as a sizable part of its portfolio. Now, let's get back to talking about robotics. The development of robots who can act like humans would quickly take over. Many labor-intensive businesses like the fast food industry, where, in states like California, entrepreneurs have to pay workers 20 dollars an hour. Right now the artificially high labor rates coupled with the increased tariff pub political environment will make the increased use of robots and artificial intelligence inevitable. Right? Right now we have a distorted market. I have no idea why people don't trust markets more. The idea of a market, a free market, is one of mankind's best inventions ever. Right? On par, really, with fire and the wheel. Let me point out that companies are already using robots. Tesla's robots are among the most advanced. You're investing in that technology when you invest in Tesla, which is down today, at these reduced prices. You need to view Tesla not as an EV company, rather as a collection of technologies. Now let's take a step back. I believe this is important. Let's try to have a macro view here. Right? Big picture view. Now, Jim Cramer likes to say there is always a bull market out there someplace. Let me say 
there is also always a bear market out there someplace. Now, we're having rolling depressions and recessions. If you're into crypto, the Bitcoin market 18 months ago was in a depression. The Celsius bankruptcy, the Sam Bankman Freed blow up, the Terra blow up, an uncertain regulatory environment with an aggressive SEC. Folks, it was terrible. It was awful. Things are so much brighter today that it is hard to believe how bad they were. Now, today, this minute, the Magnificent Seven stock prices right now are under pressure. Now, we have to figure out what's real and what's hype in general. That's an ongoing theme in life, right? It never leaves you, right? Separating out what's real and what's hype. Folks, artificial intelligence is real. It is a game changer. It is a time saver. It is a cost saver. It is deflationary. Some of the backgrounds that I use are AI created. I suspect many of the movies that I now watch have AI created components. Biotech now has the capability to process information and to find discoveries that lead to the creation of new drugs and therapies on a level that it has not before, thanks to artificial intelligence, machine learning. I view Meta, which is down over the last few weeks, to be very attractive at these price levels. Amazon now has a deal with the National Basketball Association. They own a portion of Anthropic, a promising AI player. They now offer Grubhub as part of Amazon Prime. They have revamped their streaming service interface and are now extremely well positioned as an entertainment hub in this era of streaming services. As we've discussed here in the past, its Amazon cloud services are well positioned for streaming service providers and for cryptocurrency. Amazon is down over the last three weeks. I believe Amazon is a bargain. I believe the last three weeks have created a very good buying opportunity for the stock. Finally, I expect rolling depressions and recessions going forward. Right, folks, the yield curve, which we've discussed in these videos in the past, is uninverting. Right? Comparatively speaking, interest rates are going to go up on longer-term investments. So let me just point out areas where I feel we're headed for blow-ups. Just like we had in crypto 18 months to two years ago, right, where Sam Bankman-Fried ultimately ends up in prison, right, where we find out that a stable coin, Terra, wasn't stable right? In the real world, outside of crypto, outside of the digital world, commercial real estate is headed for a depression. Folks, it's structural. People prefer to work from home. Understand what that has done too. It's changed expectations, right? I can tell you there was a time where uh, when I had to have a conference meeting, I had to rent a conference room. And it cost a lot of money. 
right? Anytime I was meeting with an opposing counsel and their client, and I'd have my client there, I had to pay big money. I was back then trying to avoid these meetings because I knew I would have to pay hundreds of dollars uh, just to have the meeting, just to have the infrastructure. Now it's interesting. Also before clients expected to meet you and they wanted to see you in a glamorous office. That was part of the cost of doing business. Now you have things called Zoom, Google Meet, Microsoft Teams. Now it's interesting, right? Meeting with an opposing counsel, I can put on a collared shirt and tie, be wearing sweatpants outside of the camera, and have a Zoom meeting cheaply. I don't have to waste hundreds of dollars on some, you know, hourly conference room for a two, three hour meeting. Well, it's interesting because now clients expect to initially meet you in Zoom. I wonder why I'm even paying for an office, right? Clients are more flexible now. They themselves don't want to leave home to meet you. Opposing counsels don't want to leave home to meet you. Court proceedings have moved online. Right? Those court hearings, now the judge doesn't expect you to come into court. Right? During pandemics, uh, people realize that they can cut down on the risk simply by staying home, particularly if they're able to appear at the hearing by Zoom, by Microsoft Meets. Right? Folks, understand the legal practice is never going back because the expectations of the players, including the customers, the clients, have changed. Well, why are people, particularly savvy, cost-conscious clients, going to want you to pay an arm and a leg for that downtown office in downtown San Francisco? They know who's really paying for your office space. It's the clients. Right? So understand, commercial real estate, there's going to be a lot of bloodletting. You know, these mortgages are, you know, interest only. The renters don't have a lot of skin in the game. Right? If the price jumps, they're going to say, hey, we'll take our business elsewhere. Many of their workers, uh, particularly long-time workers who've already proven themselves and don't have to be seen at the office to be valued by the company, Many of the workers are going to say, hey, let me work from home, right? I want to be on my sofa. I want to be watching my grandchildren. I don't want to be in some office. I don't want to be paying for parking. I don't want to be on the highway traveling to work. I want the expectation to be that I'm prioritizing my home life. Folks, commercial real estate is not coming back anytime soon. Employers who demand that their workers show up at the office are going to find themselves losing workers and are going to have to fit in with the market discipline, the changed expectations of the people applying for jobs with your firm. I believe housing is headed for a depression. Right, folks? I'm just telling you the multiples are unsustainable. They only work when you have a baby boom demographic that keeps driving up the price of real estate. They only work when you're coming out of the 1970s when stocks have been flat. People don't have an expectation of outsized gains in the stock market and they view investing in real estate as a way to not just preserve their wealth but to make money in a passive investment. Folks, that has changed now. You have a whole group of people who have made a mint in companies like Amazon, who have made a mint in cryptocurrency, right? They're thinking now like venture capitalists. They understand if you go back to the early 80s, investors in Microsoft over time, investors in Apple over time, 
did a hell of a lot better than investors in real estate. Right? As they're finding out, particularly condo buyers in places like Florida, right, these condo fees can jump. Insurance costs can jump. Right? Property taxes can jump. So let me just say, I'm expecting a changing of resource allocation. Going forward, I think people will drive less, work from home more, so that our limited energy resources can be shifted to AI, which requires a lot of energy, and to cryptocurrency mining, both of which, for the general economy, are deflationary. In time, Mercantilism, what Steve Bannon and Donald Trump believe in, the use of tariffs to prop up local manufacturing and labor prices to get in part the labor union vote, will lose out to free market capitalism, as mercantilism has lost out in the past. Right? I need for people to look at William McKinley from the 20th century. Right? And his big belief in tariffs. Folks, that ultimately lost popularity. People got tired of paying tariff prices. Now we have technology that allows for more frictionless international transactions. Right? Why should I be paying tariff prices. Now, let's be futurists here. Manufacturing will return to the U.S., but it will increasingly be robot-based. Right? The drop in house prices and in technology prices, right? Streaming costs, for example, um, which, of course, the uh, increased technology that was internet bandwidth facilitated, right? The drop in those prices will help workers deal with the inevitable drop in wages, right? I don't need to pay a cashier at McDonald's a boatload of money if there are kiosks that I can use to make my order, right? I don't need to pay a waiter a lot of money if a kiosk on my dining table at the restaurant allows me to make customized orders. Many of these jobs are going to go away. There will always be a market for people who want the human touch, right? My parents, you know, good luck getting either of them to order from anyone other than a waiter. Right? There are many people who don't use ATMs today. They still want to go into the bank. They want the reassurance that comes from talking to someone at the bank, even if it's just to withdraw a 20. Right? Those markets will always exist, but just like the number of bank tellers have dropped, just like the number of cab drivers have dropped given the emergence of Uber. I'm just telling you many of these jobs are going to disappear. Those are my thoughts this July 30th, 2024. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.